Hi guys, we hope you're doing well and in today's quick video we'll cover the six metrics to keep in mind as you evaluate deals that are presented to you. Number one is the submarket. You can do a lot of things to improve the quality of a property but you cannot relocate it. So you want to make sure that the property is in an area with no violent crimes, area where median household income is sufficient um, to cover your projected rents, um, poverty rate is relatively low, it's a diverse area, um, basically a nice nice neighborhood, uh, not necessarily a war zone, um, or at a minimum on the path of progress, something that you can validate through your own research or talking to property managers or other industry professionals. Number two is the top line, and that pertains to your rent, rent growth, uh, vacancy assumptions. Are current rents at market, below market? What would it take to bring them to market? Are these rent growth assumptions realistic? Are they in line with the historical growth rate? Is the projected vacancy in line with the historical growth rate? And usually if there is remodel involved, um, you may, or even just uh, purely raising rents, you may expect a certain um, level of vacancy to increase in the short run. So is that incorporated in the year one, year two projections of the sponsor? Number three, expenses. Um, there are a number of line items that go into this category, but at a minimum you want to ensure that the adjustments for taxes have been made, if applicable. Um, some counties reassess taxes annually, um, some every three, others every five years, so you want to understand that. Adjustments for insurance, which especially in the current market environment is impacting a lot of deals. And of course, um, adjustments for property management fees, labor expenses, and such. Number four is your um, rent, your reserve requirements, right? Um, has the sponsor carved out an adequate amount for capex? Is there sufficient cushion baked in in the event of unexpected expenses, which inevitably almost always happen? And are operating reserves adequate to cover operating expenses in the event of duress or distress? Number five is the entry and exit cap rate. Are they reasonable? Are they in line with market? Most sponsors typically project cap rate reversion or a certain level of cap rate increase at exit um, to account for any unexpected market fluctuations. If it happens, at least you're prepared. If it doesn't, then of course the valuation at exit will be even higher. Um, how much you project uh, to increase per year really depends on the property, the market conditions, um, the um, entry cap rate and such and usually for entry cap rate um, you want that to be in line with market which may not necessarily be the purchase price cap rate and number six last but not least are the debt terms are the debt terms consistent with the business plan um, is the interest rate hedged in some um, manner whether it's by swap or interest rate caps is the tenor consistent with the business plan if it's fixed are any are the prepayment penalties factored in uh, especially if entry is projected before the loan tenor and such you want to ask those questions up front and again understand um, how they meld into the numbers so we hope you found today's video helpful and can now go and analyze deals with confidence if you enjoyed it Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you at the next one.